I want to play a highlight from yesterday with the Attorney General testifying in front of the House Committee. Uh, this this is some of I'm going to only play about a minute of it. You have to look it up. We'll tweet it out. This is the most satisfying five minutes I've heard in a long time. It's uh, Representative Victoria Sparts. Uh, she grew up in the Soviet Union. And she had a thing or two to get off her chest. Listen to this. Attorney General, you had a very moving statement about your grandparents coming here uh, from Belarus to live in the country without fear of prosecution. I grew up in a very similar country, Ukraine now. And when I came here as a young person, I believed in the value as an American not to be afraid of my government. But I wanted to tell you, and I want to share with you and get your thoughts on that. Are you aware that a lot of Americans are now uh, afraid of being prosecuted by your department? Are you aware about that? I think that uh, constant attacks on the department and saying no, it's that- It's not attacks. Well, let me, let me give you an example. I don't know you talk what... about January 6th people. I'm sorry? Here, there, there are some people came on January 6th. There are probably were some people that came on January 6th here, you know, that had bad intent. But a lot of good Americans from my district came here because they are sick and tired of this government not serving them. They came with strollers and the kids, and there was chaotic situation because the proper security wasn't provided. That's a question that was answered really why. Why we debated for 45 minutes on the floor and didn't stop the debate after the people broke in into the Capitol. But these people came, they were throwing the smoke bombs into the crowd with strollers with kids. People were showed up, you know, FBI agent to people's houses. You had in my district, in my town, FBI phone numbers all over the district. Please call. Call that. People are truly afraid. I just want to make sure if you're not aware that you are. And this is a big problem when people are afraid of their own government. He went on to give a non-answer answer, and I don't think it moved uh, him very much. But it certainly moved me. And uh, Congresswoman Sparts is uh, with us now. Hi, Victoria. Hi, thank you for having me. I, I have to tell you, I, I, thank you. There are, there are Americans, and then there are the Americans that really understand what we're up against. And they're usually the ones that have come from a communist country, a communist China, Vietnam, or anywhere in the uh, former Soviet Union. You know what's happening, and uh, and for him not to respond to you, I, you know, George Washington said, uh, you know, when the um, when the government fears the people, there's liberty. When the people fear the government, there's tyranny, and we're there. Well. I'll be honest with you, Glenn. You know, maybe I came with idealistic ideas because I read about the America from Alexis de Tocqueville and Friedman and Hayek and grown up in, you know, in a failed system and known what at stake. I probably was a little bit young and naive, but I'm not going to accept one thing. I'm not going to accept for this republic to fail because... If we become a dictatorship and we are moving in that direction, there is no hope for anyone else in the world. And I will tell you something that is very dangerous. We can have a difference in opinion, and it's okay. It's healthy to have a difference in opinion. But when people are afraid to express their opinion, that is called dictatorship. This was exactly under totalitarian dictatorship of communists in Soviet Union where people were afraid to express an opinion. No, we don't have a right uh, you know, to hurt each other, but we have a right to stand an opinion. We don't have a right to harm each other, and, but we do, do have a right to disagree with the government. That is the core fundamentals of this republic. If people are not willing to come, listen, I don't like that people come and scream me in town halls. I don't like that people disagree with me, but if I'm going to go to this office, I have to hear the people. And where we are right now as a country, the frustrations of the people are real. 
The GIS government is not serving the people. We have a big machine that's serving big money, and people are sick and tired, and we're bankrupting our future generation. And a lot of people died for our freedoms. I am not willing to accept it. I know it's hard. I know these battles, you know, not easy, but we have to win them. We lose this war. And, you know, I'm telling you, sometimes maybe, you know, being young and idealistic, you know, it's bad. But sometimes, you know, coming here is like you put a frog in the hot water. You know, I came here and I believed in all of the value Americans. And I truly believe we are not going to destroy our republic. This is the greatest country ever existed in the history of the world. And we as Americans are going to get together to save it. No, so, but what the Department of Justice is doing is, is disgrace. Um, we need more people like you in the House and the Senate, and you're not going to run for re-election to the House, and there were hopes that you would run in Indiana for Senate, but you're not going to do either of those things. You're just you're getting out of politics. Well, I need to regroup, reinvigorate, and really spend more time to get more Americans because this government, don't underestimate still the power of Americans. Listen, with all of the bad things, I probably wouldn't be <laughs> where I am, you know, if it would be for the American people. I fought my own party more <laughs> than other party. I don't yeah, even I have time for them. So I was here only because good, hardworking Americans stood with me and fought against my own party with me. Americans that care about that. And we need to get more Americans to understand what is at stake and talk to them. So we have to have more allies. I need to regroup to figure out, you know, I honestly disappointed where my party is and lack of leadership, because unfortunately, the other side is so far gone. If we don't fight and win, not just be talking head on TV or writing books and go do grandiose state but actually deliver. And this is a real war, and we need to come after the other side, but it takes leadership, and I'm responsible for my party, my leadership. You know, so I need to figure out how I can regroup and get you know, some energy back because I've been for decades fought my own party and another one too. I had some very tough battles, so I'm battle-tested, but I think this battle needs to be won with American people, and don't underestimate the power. I truly believe these people are afraid of American people. They are afraid of American people. And right now they're trying to oppress it. But I think American people are very strong and they're not going to allow Washington, D.C. corruption to take over and destroy the country. So I appreciate that people like you are, you know, listen, I listened for you for a long time. You've been in the trenches. I, I, and, and I don't accept, you know, what they do. And they try to really demonize every American. So people are afraid now to come and say to D.C., oh, my gosh, we'll have to have a peaceful demonstration. Oh, no, they'll say we are insurrectionists. We are awful people. Well, this is terrible. This is like dictatorship. I cannot believe it happened in the United States of America. Well, I just wanted to encourage you, because I read um, in, uh, I think this was not a Politico, this was from The Hill, I think, and it said uh, that you never planned on having a long career in politics. I have a lot of my own things I wanted to do in my life, and I'm going to get some stuff done and get the hell out of politics for sure. I appreciate that, but I, that's something I say to myself almost every day. There's so many things I want to do. I mean, how much how much longer? And I we just have to continue to do it if if that you feel that is the best way to help. So I would like you just to consider a plea from me that if there's any way to run for Senate, if you think you could win, we need. The, I mean, the, you're right. The party is completely uh, off track. Um, let me let me switch uh, gears with you on um, Zelensky. <sighs> What is what is happening in the House? Is this real that we're not going to give the aid uh, any more aid until we start getting some answers? Are we going to hold the line on the budget? Do you have any idea? Well, let me tell you something. It's so unfortunate, you know, that, you know, when I last year, 
I was a standalone, and you know, listen, I sometimes feel like, uh, you know, like, you know, one woman standing, okay, yeah, but good. it's okay. Even if I have to be one woman standing, I will stand there. I'm okay with that. If I'm going to be attacked, I was attacked last summer by Republicans and Democrats. I was dragged through mud on all media when I said, we must demand accountability. You understand what country we're dealing. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure this hard-earned money, Americans are generous people. Americans won a lot of wars and freed a lot of people around the world. But Americans are not stupid, and Americans are not going to be betrayed. And we need to know, we need to make sure where this aid goes. We're dealing with very complicated, corrupt countries, and we need to make sure that we have accountability, or it actually might get in the people that you're trying to fight, because this is a challenge when you have. We saw what's happened in Afghanistan. We saw what's happened with a lot of countries. We failed because we did not have proper accountability, and Congress didn't hold executive branch accountable. I cannot believe Congresswoman asking accountability for taxpayers' money, this is being pro Putin. <laughs> I think not asking is pro Putin, you know, and I was very disappointed how I was attacked, but it's okay. Listen, I, you know, if I would have been offended real easily, I wouldn't survive this world. Right. Okay? I don't get offended that easily. And I held the ground on that. We did a little bit better, but we didn't do as a good job. And now a lot of Americans are asking questions. And I said, if President Biden needs to make the case, why? It is a national interest of Americans, you know, to help Ukraine to win that war and show what is happening. He has not communicated for Congress. There is frustration from both sides forever. He doesn't even come to Congress. You are not going to go to all of this international. They talk about country. I'll just tell you one thing. If Americans don't lead, everything is gone. We're the only country, I hate, I hate to say, the only country who can lead around the world. If we're not doing something, everyone gone. You can do grandiose statements, but if we don't do any actions, nothing is going to happen. I, unfortunately, we don't have strong leadership, you know, and that's why we have all this war. Strong America is actually peace for everyone. That's why we have to keep our country strong and get our act together. You know, otherwise our adversaries, included like China, will be destabilizing the country. And and that is our responsibility of Republicans. So I think he put himself now in a very tough situation where a lot of Americans are asking right questions. And he needs to figure out now with the Senate how he's going to answer them. Victoria Sparts uh, from Indiana, uh, Congresswoman, uh, we need more people like you. Um, thank you so much for everything. Hope to talk thank to you again. Thank you. Appreciate having me. You bet.